Welcome back guys. So this video will be all about this little machine here. Most of you will know that I always used a PC for grading, which worked well in the last few years, in the last almost 10 years. And uh, so now I switched to Mac. And that has some pros and cons and you need to get some accessories. Some of you can see already there. Um, so that's what this video will be all about. I hope you enjoy it. All right, here we are. <laughs> ah, so, Mac Studio. I went with the M2 Ultra with 128 gigs of RAM and uh, two terabyte internal SSD, high speed NVMe SSD. <laughs> and that thing cost me about six grand euros in that case um which isn't which isn't all because there's some stuff that you have to get with it to color properly to use all your stuff at least i had to get something you know like a thunderbolt dock and so first of all do you need this those kind of specs i don't think so not for coloring um you know denoising is taxing on the system and uh, if you have a lot of effects a lot of effects on on a shot or silver shots can be taxing but usually um, something a bit lower spec can handle that too you know it's a it's 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 a crazy crazy fast machine but you don't need the m2 ultra i would say especially if you're a beginning colorist or not a beginning colorist, that's even too much for a beginning colorist. Um, if you're an intermediate colorist, almost going pro, then Mac Studio would be, would be a great choice for you. But not with the Ultra, I would go with the M2 Max. Um, if you can afford the RAM, get the RAM. Uh, you don't need the 192 gigs. It's, that's totally overkill. Um, the 128 is great, 64 is good too. Um, if you're doing a lot of, you know, motion effects, um, compositing, then maybe you should go for the 128. Um, internal SSD, you know, a lot of the times, one other colorist told me, you know, at this point, the, the bottleneck for us as colorists is almost always the, the storage fast storage enough storage um some some projects you know if you get the raw files you have to work with with crazy high uh uh storage sizes you know several terabytes that you have to work with and um i went with the two terabytes so i can put all my programs on it some smaller projects even some bigger ones because when i'm done with the project i put them all on a on another hard drive to to store them away and then i'm done with that you know and what i went with was an nvme enclosure from acasis 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 i don't know what it's how it's pronounced actually <laughs> so that's an nvme enclosure you can put in uh, up to eight terabytes of nvme storage in there and um i went with uh, Western Digital um, 850X, four terabytes. And uh, it works with Thunderbolt 4. So you can also use it with a PC. And I plugged it in, worked right away. I'm working from that on bigger projects. And so I can, you know, spare the two terabytes internal SSD a bit because, you know, like all hard drives, even NVMEs, they, they fail in a... In a Hopefully not too soon, but probably in 20 years or whatever, 15. I don't know what the lifespans are. So I try to, uh, you know, uh, get the, the load off of it a bit. So I, I, I only work from the NVMe enclosure. The internal SSD, the two terabytes, has crazy speeds. It's like six gigabytes per second read and write. And the NVMe enclosure is close to three gigabytes, which it's totally fine you know a normal external ssd only has like 500 megabytes per second read and write so this is totally enough totally fine with up to 12k footage 
so uh, the internal speeds are overkill. Let's uh, we'll see what happens in a few years, what we need and uh, what we work with. But right now that's that's totally fine. So one other big point um, is the ports. You know, the Mac Studio, everywhere says, oh, I'm so, it's so great. It has so many ports. It has a few ports more than the usual Mac, especially more than the MacBook Pro. But sorry, I'm a bit out of breath. I had to carry up uh, something heavy for my girlfriend <laughs> right before this video. And um, I went with the CalDigit TS4, which is a Thunderbolt dock, and it gives you lots of USB 3, display port, um, headphone jack, another SSD port, micro SSD even. Um, I think three or four Thunderbolt ports. And, you know, I, I also have another USB port put in there. And uh, so that's that's how I managed to get all my stuff working here. Two stream decks, a Wacom, the mini panel. Um, one screen is working with Thunderbolt. Uh, the other one, Thunderbolt 2 display port. Um, I have uh, this camera hooked up. I have the audio interface. I have the NVMe enclosure, the USB hub. Um, it's it's crazy. I have so many stuff, and you definitely need to um, upgrade something uh, in terms of ports. You know, you need to get a dock. Um, what else? What else? So there were some things happening. You know, the the power. Uh, supply of the of the thunderbolt 4 dock you know I, I didn't i didn't put in my mouse in there i just put it into my display because it's like a daisy chain system also my uh wireless keyboard here it's also in the display my bandq here which is very nice because that's how i save two usb ports <laughs> then also my davinci i have this dongle still there are also digital licenses. You get a, you know, like a license key. I got the dongle because it was before they uh, used, I don't know if they always used the serial keys and both, they use both. I'm not sure. I have the dongle and that's why I need another USB port. <laughs> so like I said, I have so many stuff and something. I actually, this is this, this a totally different story, but I'm going to tell you right now, you know, um, I ordered another PC before that, which was a crazy machine. And that machine was um, a 4090 RTX and also 128 gigs of RAM, uh, six terabytes of NVMe storage on the motherboard. Um, it had... Oh, the processor it was an i9-13900K uh, Intel. And the machine, I had it for, how long did I have it? One and a half weeks. I tried, I tried everything with it, with it, it worked well. And there was just one thing that drove me crazy. That was the noise. I hated the noise it made. I have my old PC, old PC is still here. It's, you know, a few years old. And that one, it's it's very silent. It has a what does it have? A twenty seventy super and an i seven something. I don't know. And sixty four gigs of RAM, I think. Even when gaming or something, you know, this thing stays quiet. And the new PC, you know, the graphics card, it, it was humongous. Which, which is fine, you know, it needs the cooling and it needs this, I don't know, if, did it have a vapor chamber? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, but the fans, they were so loud. It had water cooling. I put water cooling in it. And um, and I also had, I had a fractal meshify case and which I, I even went with a, you know, it's a, like a custom manufacturer that does workstations in Germany. I told them, hey, put, put in the, the most silent fans that you can get. And they put in some, what the hell, <laughs> put in a Noctua, whatever fans. And um, it was just too loud. And I 
tried different fan curves. I talked with the tech support and, you know, even the power supply made a weird noise. Uh, you know, every minute there was a kind of ramped up something and I'm sure I could have resolved it with some, you know, uh, exchanging some parts and um, the graphics card had a crazy coal wine and the 4090 RDX apparently has a lot of coal wine and, uh, or, or, you know, a lot of models have it and mine had it too. And I thought to myself, why the hell didn't you check that before? I told you I want the silent system. And, you know, the speeds were good. I didn't have blue screens. Everything worked. Uh, the RAM was fine. But the noise, man. The noise. I couldn't handle the noise. I can't handle the noise. That's our dog. Can't handle the noise anymore. And that's when I decided, okay, I'm going to send this thing back. Got all my money back. It was like five and a half K. And I got a discount. So was a bit more than that and I told myself okay I'm going to try the Mac route route the Mac route now and that's when I decided on the M2 Ultra and I knew I wanted to get the M2 Ultra for future proofing and because I'm also doing a lot of you know sometimes sometimes some 3D stuff uh, just you know for myself and a lot of photo editing and Lightroom uses a lot of uh RAM as well so that's why I went with the 128 gigs. And so the machine was six grand euros. And then the CalDigit was almost 500. And the NVMe was, what was it? I think I got a good deal. I only paid like 200 for the, for the NVMe itself. That was like three, 300. So almost 7K for this machine now. And so just think about it. If you have a lot of peripherals, you're going to need a hub. I mean, the CalDigit TS4 is like one of the best and one of the most expensive ones, but I totally recommend it. I totally rec recommend it. And if you, you know, I still have to keep some of my ports free for, you know, maybe another raid or whatever, you know. So think about all this stuff. But... The Mac Studio is crazy silent, so silent. I don't hear it. You know, I have this, my NVMe enclosure, this Acasis one, Acasis, whatever. It has a little button you can put on a fan if it's like getting too hot, but it's never overheating, nothing. And I did a lot of, you know, uh, strenu strenuous work with it. And... Yeah, so I'm very happy in that regard. Um, I like the OS. Um, DaVinci is working well. Native ProRes renders. It has those hardware encoders um, for H.264, H.265 ProRes. Like I said, it's rendering crazy fast. I tried 8K red raw stuff and it's just, you know, very smooth. Even even with a bit of denoise on it and um, stays quiet all the time. So I really like it. And it's 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 all all that in a small package, you know. I have to use the hub with it, you know, when I'm I think when I'm going to a client, I'm not using the hub. I, I can, you know, I keep it a bit more minimal than than I probably don't use a hub. I'm not sure. Don't want to think about it. Don't want to take it with me anywhere. <laughs> I just want to keep it here. I would probably go for a MacBook. I, I thought about getting a MacBook Pro, actually. Um, I know uh, this YouTube dude. What's it called? What's his, uh, what's his called? What's he called? Uh, Jake. Jake Pierre Lee. Another YouTuber. He has a MacBook. And it works fine for him. I thought about that, too. And... You know, just getting, a, I think he has the M1 Max. I thought about getting the M2 Max and just a Thunderbolt dock. But I'm still, I would still be missing some ports. And I don't know, I just like the, I just wanted to get the Ultra. So I had to go with the, with the Mac Studio. Um, would it go for the Mac Pro? No, definitely not. Not as a colorist, if you're like... If you have watched some reviews of the Mac Studio and the Mac, the new Mac Pro, then you probably already know that 
the Mac Pro is just, you know, it has those um, PCIe slots for, you can expand the storage there, which is fine, which is good. But, um, you know, there's so, so many audio cards and I don't, I, I don't use that stuff. So uh, Mac Studio is to totally fine. Sorry. And uh, most of the colorists I know use Mac Studio now when they use a Mac or even their old iMacs, which still work fine. So you have to think the, the color grading process is not that taxing. It's not that insane. You know, we're not 3D artists. Um, those guys, they need a PC definitely or a crazy workstation. Um, those guys need that. But as a colorist, you don't really need that stuff. So another pro, what else did I want it? Did I want to say? Yeah, so the PC was out too loud. Too I don't want to just deal with that stuff anymore. I, I'm I'm still a PC guy, I have to say. Um, like I said, I would have kept it if it was a bit more quiet. Um, I I just wonder when I will get a new PC. In a few years, probably, but I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm also I like to play games sometime, but I'm just, I have my OLED client monitor here and also have the PS5 and the Series X down there. It's hidden, so nobody sees it. I want to keep it classy in here, <laughs> but um, I can just chill with that and can use a controller. And uh, but, but the Mac for me is just a working machine for photography, for color grading, and yeah. So what else, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, so um, it's expensive, not as expensive as the last few generations of, of the professional Mac machines, you know, with the 219, 2019 Mac Pro, you've you had to spend like 50 grand or what for, you know, the maximum. And now I'm already at the maximum almost. Um, which is currently possible. Yeah, so I still have to set up a lot of things. Um, still have to set up my, my stream deck here. Um, I hope you liked this video. It was a bit more rambly than usual, but I hope you get something out of it. And uh, yeah, if you, if you liked it, then leave a like. If you don't, if you don't, uh, if you're not a sub already, leave a sub. <laughs> Hope to see you in the next one. Cheers and bye bye. Oh, I uh, sorry, I'm back. I forgot something. Um, one thing that really is true um, is that when you have footage in the timeline in DaVinci or even in Premiere, probably even better in Final Cut. I don't use Final Cut. Um, it's it's smoother than on the PC. And I have the comparison with, with, you know, a crazy workstation there. It's smoother. The cursor is just, it's, it's almost like people say like butter, but it's not like butter, but it's very smooth. You know, I don't like the comparison. <laughs> Whoops. I don't know. Well, um, it's, it's very smooth. And that's something that is also a nice pro for the Mac and, and, Something that I never realized is, um, you know, Windows, uh, that's something I remember that from my, from my time in university, we had like this professor for design, whatever. He always said, you know, the Mac computers, they, uh, they render numbers and fonts. It's very uh, high res. It's, you don't see any pixels, you know. And you can see that in the whole interface in DaVinci or on the whole computer, you know, with, on the PC, when you type in something like a value, a number or whatever, you can see those little pixels and it's, you can see it. And now that I'm using the, I have it open right here. Now that I'm using this, um, I can see difference, you know, everything's so, again, Buttery smooth. <laughs> um, it just looks better. So that's something else I wanted to share with you that I just forgot. So that's it.